Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair was one of the best matches of 2021. No hyperbole, no joke, that match was amazing. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Eleanor Wrestling and I do previews, reviews, predictions and news videos for all things pro wrestling. Today, I'll be reviewing WWE's latest pay-per-view Survivor Series and we'll find out if it was a good show or if it was a bad show. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, comment down below your thoughts on Survivor Series this year and let's get on with the review. We had a match on the pre-show, but it wasn't the Battle Royal. For some bizarre reason, WWE decided to put the US title versus Intercontinental Championship match on the kickoff show. That instantly tells the fans, instantly tells the viewers, do not care about this match. So I didn't care about it. Was it good? Yeah. But should it have been on the free show? Absolutely not. But as I said, it was Dane Priest versus Shinsuke Nakamura, US title versus Intercontinental Championship. This match was good. Dane Priest hit a leg lariat, Shinsuke hit a sliding German suplex, sliding Kinshasa for a really close near fall, and then we got a stupid finish. Rick Boogs was playing his guitar and Dane Priest, because he's a heel, got so angry, he went up to Rick Boogs, attacked him, broke his guitar, and attacked Shinsuke Nakamura with a part of the broken guitar, causing a disqualification. Our first match on the Survivor Series card, brand supremacy, brand versus brand, and we get a disqualification. Thankfully, it was the only one of the night, if you don't count like eliminations, but this was stupid. I didn't I didn't care for it. I didn't care for it. I thought it really I thought it set a really bad tone for the rest of the show. I didn't like it. I didn't really like it. Then the opening match, contrary to all the reports which suggested that Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair was going to main event, and it didn't, made me very mad because as a women's wrestling advocate, they could have done with this main event considering how amazing the match was. It should have main evented. Roman Reigns does not need to main event every single pay-per-view. Do you get it, WWE? Do you get it? However, our opening contest was Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. This match was so good. Oh my god, the crowd was chanting, this is awesome, and these two, we know they hate each other, we know that, and they went at it. There were several moments where they were just slapping each other, like it, like it was nobody's business. This was amazing. Very early on, Becky Lynch went for the disarmor, then they were just vicious mountain punches towards each other. Becky Lynch hit her classic springboard kick, Fl Charlotte Flair hit a double moonstop, that looked amazing. Becky Lynch hit a guillotine leg drop for a close near fall, she then hit an inverted DDT. Becky... Becky Lynch then locked on the figure four leg lock, adding insult to it. I loved it. And also, if you know about all the Ric Flair drama as well, that's really insulting Ric Flair as well. So that was brilliant. She was even wooing. It was hilarious. Charlotte Flair then, of course, had to go the extra stake and add on doing the disarmor. And then Charlotte Flair was rolling up Becky Lynch, about to win, but the referee noticed Charlotte Flair was using the ropes as leverage so the referee did not count the pin allowing becky lynch to roll up her own roll to roll up her own roll up reverse into her own, own roll up and becky used the ropes for the win so yes your winner becky lynch this was such an amazing match and i feel like this was the culmination of their rivalry as Becky so eloquently put it on Instagram, it started in Brooklyn and ended in Brooklyn. If you did not know, SummerSlam 2018 was indeed in Brooklyn where Becky Lynch hit the loudest slap known to man to Charlotte Flair and then they just had this match and Becky Lynch won. Even though it wasn't massive clean, but she won nonetheless. So, so amazing. This was match of the night. We barely even got started. This match was so good. I loved it. A great way to kick off Survivor Series. We then got the first of our traditional five on five. It was Team Raw versus Team Smackdown for the men. This was really good. A couple of questionable eliminations, as there always is every year, I find. But this was really good. Kevin Owens deliberately eliminated himself so early on. He got counted out before the match even started. I don't know why. That was silly. And then Finn Balor hit Happy Corbin with the Coup de Grace to eliminate Corbin. Then Bobby Lashley hit the Spear and locked on the Hurt Lock on King Woods to eliminate Woods. And then Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre because they tried to reignite their rivalry for the past few months were just brawling on the outside like crazy 
forgot the referee was counting, so they both got counted out, eliminating them both. And then Sheamus hit the bro kick on Finn Balor to eliminate Finn Balor. Austin Theory rolled up Sheamus to eliminate him. Jeff Hardy eliminated Austin Theory with the Swanton Bomb. And then Seth Rollins hit Jeff Hardy with the curb stomp. One, two, three, your winner, Team Raw, and the sole survivor. Much to my surprise, but much to my happiness, Seth. Rollins. This was amazing. I was so happy that Seth won because I think he needed this. He's obviously the number one contender for the WWE title and we know what happens later on in Roman Reigns vs Biggie. So Seth needed to really prove that he is dominant and he is a worthy challenger for Big E. This was amazing. I loved it. Okay, on the pre-show we saw Vince McMahon arrive into the arena with an egg like a golden egg and we get a recap of that and then he is like showing it off to everyone and he's like oh look at my egg look at my egg this was really weird we then got the 25 man battle royal now even though they added it to the main show i could not care less about it i couldn't it was so there there were so many people that i was like oh my god these could have been in team raw aj styles Chad Gable, you know, Cesaro, all of those people were in this battle royal. None of them won. It was, I didn't care. I did not care. WWE gave me no reason to care about this battle royal. Plus, they made it all about The Rock because it's The Rock's 25th anniversary. And spoiler alert, did The Rock appear? No. Do you want to know who won the battle royal? It was came down to Ricochet representing SmackDown. I was representing Raw and Omos because he's huge. Eliminated Ricochet. There you go, you're winning. Omos. After the match, Omos and AJ Styles were celebrating. The Street Brothers came down, started attacking them for some reason, and ran away with some pizza because Pizza Hut like sponsoring the match, I think. I didn't care. I didn't care. We then get the Raw Tag Team Champions, the RK Bro versus the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos. This was classic tag team action. I really enjoyed this. Riddle hit a corkscrew moose, the Usos hit suicide dives, Randy Orton hit two snap scoop power slams, draping DDTs for close near falls, Riddle hit a Pele kick, the Usos hit this amazing pop-up Simone drop for a really close near fall, and then Jimmy Uso was going for the Uso splash, but Randy Orton, you have to remember that Randy Orton comes out of nowhere with these things. So as Jimmy Uso was flying in the air, Randy Orton recovered and gave him this amazing RKO in the middle of the air for the win. This was a really good match. I really did enjoy it. I won't lie to you though. I was shocked that RK Bro won. Like, SmackDown got barely any wins. They got the DQ finish and Roman Reigns won, spoiler alert, later on. It was kind of strange that SmackDown didn't get any victories considering it's been the A show the past year, but it's okay. Then we have more of this egg business. Vince McMahon is in his office along with Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville. And he's like, my egg has gone missing. They're like, oh my god, who stole your egg? And they try and figure out who stole the egg. And Vince McMahon says, like, everyone's going to rally around on Raw to figure out who stole the egg. And earlier, Vince McMahon was showing off his egg to Roman Reigns. At I don't, I don't know why it was there. Like, I, I think it was, I think the egg is something to do with Red Notice or something like that. This was really stupid. The only good thing about it was it was a really nice breakup for the show. So you didn't get burnt out when you were watching matches. It was a nice like five minute break to just go and do something else. Grab a drink, do whatever you wanted. Because it was really stupid. <laughs> We then get Team Raw versus Team Smackdown for the women. And I thought this match went on a little bit too long. And I never say that because women's matches never get any time. So when they go really long, you know, that's a good thing. But I did think this dragged on just like a little bit. But it was amazing. I loved it. Very early on, Tony Storm rolled up Carmella to eliminate Carmella. Tony Storm hit this amazing twisting suplex onto Zelina Vega to eliminate Vega. Liv Mong hit the Oblivion to eliminate Tony Storm. Sasha Banks eliminated Liv Mong with the Frog Splash. Shane Baszler hit this huge forearm strike onto Rhea Ripley to eliminate Ripley. Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks obviously reignited their rivalry because their match at WrestleMania was so good. So they were arguing on the outside and Sasha Banks gets counted out. That's how you eliminate Sasha Banks. She gets counted out. Now I understand that. Sasha Banks is amazing. A future Hall of Famer. A full horsewoman. You're not going to have her necessarily get eliminated clean, but... I did think her getting counted out was like a little bit stupid. And then it was just Bianca Belair. She was the only member of Raw left. 
She rolled up Natalia to eliminate Natalia. She eliminated Shane Baser with the glam slam. And then it was just Bianca Belair and Shotzi. Bianca hit Shotzi with the kiss of death for the win. So your winner, Team Raw, and the sole survivor, Bianca Bell. Air. What a year Bianca Bella has had. Oh my god. Winning the Royal Rumble, main eventing WrestleMania, SmackDown Women's Championship, Soul Survivor. Oh my god. What a year. She so deserves that top woman of the year, like in the top 100. Oh my god. Bianca Bella is amazing. This was really good. So proud of her. Interview next with Paul Heyman. Kayla Braxton asks him, are the rumours true that Brock Lesnar's suspension is no longer indefinite? This was sprinkling the seeds for a potential Brock Lesnar appearance. He did not appear, very sadly. But yes, Paul Heyman acted so like, I don't know where you're about, Brock Lesnar, who's that? And we all know Paul Heyman is probably responsible. I Did I not say it? I said when Brock Lesnar got suspended, I think Paul Heyman's going to be like paying off that fine and help Brock Lesnar no longer be suspended. I said it and I think Paul Heyman has definitely done that. This was a brilliant tease. Oh, I'm so excited for Paul Heyman to actually turn on Roman Reigns. I thought it happened in Crown Jewel, it didn't, but I know it's going to happen and we're going to re-get Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Oh, I'm so ready for it. Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns have had such an amazing alliance the past year, but I miss Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. I miss it. This was a really good tease. Of course, Paul Heyman pretended he did not know anything about that and he told Kayla Braxton to go and ask Adam Pearce. I can't imagine Adam Pearce is going to be overly happy about this. No. Main event time, the Universal Champion Roman Reigns versus the WWE Champion Big E. This match was really good. Did it main need to main event? Absolutely not. Should it open the show like it was originally planned to? Roman Lee? Yeah, but it's okay. Roman Reigns hit a leaping clothesline. He then hit the drive-by. Big E was hitting several belly-to-belly -belly suplexes for a close near fall. Roman Reigns hit a Simone drop. Big E with a stretch muffler submission. We were like, oh my god, is Roman Reigns going to tap out? Oh my god, of course he did not. Roman Reigns had to hit three Superman punches onto Big E just to get Big E to fall down. That's how tough Big E is. He's amazing. Then Big E hit the big ending, but Roman Reigns was too close to the ropes. The referee never had to count a pin. And then Roman Reigns hit the spear. One, two, three. Your winner, SmackDown, Roman Reigns to close the show. This was a really good main event. I enjoyed it a lot. As I mentioned before, I am a bit bitter that it did main event because I don't think it needed to, but it was really good. We did not get The Rock. We did not get Brock Lesnar. It was okay. That was fine that we didn't get to see them. I wish we did, but it's totally okay. This main event was really good. Overall, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. Survivor Series was very hit and miss. It had some huge highlights. Becky Lynch vs. Shafler was amazing. The 5-on-5 five -five match was great. Roman Reigns vs. Big E was great. The tag team match was great. But oh my god, that battle royal was stupid. I did not care. Shinsuke and Damien Priest, they had a good match. The DQ finish ruined it for me and it was on the pre-show. That was stupid. The egg stuff was really weird. I just thought it had really weird pacing to the show. I liked that we had breakups between it, like the interview with Paul Heyman and the egg stuff and everything else. It was nice to pace out the show, but it was really weird. Like I... It was just weird. That's I'm just keep saying. It was just bizarre and a little bit strange. So therefore, I'm giving Survivor Series a seven out of ten. Thank you all so so much for watching. Comment down below your thoughts on Survivor Series this year, and I will see you all very soon for another video. Bye, guys.